Mmm, somebody's stinking. Babe, I know you lying, trying to say that when I just walked by. Well, since you got so much mouth about it, it must be you. And see, that's why I know you hate me, because, baby, I get Scentbird, which is a fragrance subscription service that lets me try one or more new designer fragrances every doggone month for $17. Matter of fact, you was doing a whole lot of talking, so let me just show you which fragrances I got this month. I got me some Dolce Gabbana The One, and it smells delightful. Like some vanilla, a peach, and a mandarin is sitting in a bouquet of flowers. Got me some DKNYB Delicious. And this the one when you first get out the shower, honey, when you want to smell fresh like powder. But it also has a hint of green apple with it. And last but certainly not least, I got my Burberry Brit Sheer, honey. This is the fruity one. Smell like mandarin, pineapple, and citrus. This the one where you want to smell where you want them to eat you up. There are over 600 designer fragrances to choose from for male or female. Now each one of these fragrances is supposed to last 30 days, but child, Mine be lasting a lot longer than this. Girl, huh? you know mm -hmm. I was just kidding. You got any discounts or anything that I can use to get me some scent bird? Mm-hmm. You better be glad I'm nice. All you got to do is click the link below to visit the Scentbird website or scan the QR code on the screen and use my code up above for 55% off of your first month at Scentbird. Baby, that's about $8 for your first month. I'm finna do that now, girl. Thank you. You are so sweet. This is Ashley with Ashley Says So. This is an old Hollywood scandalous story about the tortured soul of Mr. Billy Preston and what really destroyed him. Let's go ahead and get to the disclaimer so we can get to the story. The whole video is hearsay, rumor, and gossip that I find on TV, online, magazine, books, and I ball it all up and I tell you guys a story. It's all for entertainment purposes only. Now let's get to it. William Everett Preston, aka Billy Preston, was born on September the 2nd, 1946 in Houston, Texas. His mother's name was Robbie Lee and his father's name was George, and although they had other children on top of Billy, their relationship did not work out, and so Robbie Lee took little Billy and his siblings and she moved to Los Angeles. From my research, it seems that Robbie Lee chose Los Angeles because she had dreams of being a famous piano player. As soon as she got there, she started playing in churches, stage plays, and possibly even some film production. However, one of the biggest gigs she landed was playing for a tourist production of Amos and Andy. Now, I'm not sure if any of Robbie Lee's other children uh, were interested in show business the way she was, but I know for sure that little Billy would. In fact, little Billy himself had started playing the piano around five or six, and by the time his mother got this job with Amos and Andy, Billy was around nine years old and he was so good that his mother looked at him almost like an apprentice or a protege, if you will. And since this was the case, when she went on her Amos and Andy job, she took Billy with her. Now, this should have been a happy and memorable time in Billy's life. He's with Amos and Andy. He's got his mother by his side. You know, he's meeting new people, learning new things. Should have definitely been a dream, but this tour right here was no dream at all. In fact, it was a nightmare because while Billy was traveling and touring with his mom, a man that we'll just call Bob, we'll name him Bob, a man named Bob was the actual tourist company's pianist. And so being the tourist company's pianist, this meant that he spent a lot of time with Robbie Lee and also a lot of time with Billy. And Bob took a liking to young Billy and not in a good way. So suddenly, Bob would find all of these excuses of why he needed to work with Billy alone. You know, Miss Robbie Lee, you got so much stuff to do. You ain't got to be in here while I coach little Billy. You know, go on, handle your business. Oh, Robbie Lee, I tell you. I think your boy Billy would learn the piano better, you know, if you was away. You know how children are when their parents are around. You know, maybe you should leave. Excuse after excuse, reason after reason, and to everybody's horror, Robbie Lee took Bob's advice. And baby, in no time flat, Bob took advantage of the time he had alone with Billy to enact his evil plans. Y'all already know what it is. Touchy, touchy, filly, filly. Well, even though Billy was only nine years old, he was old enough to know that what Bob was doing to him was not right. So Gossip claims after it had been done a few times, he ended up waking his mama up out of her sleep in the middle of the night and telling her what this man had been doing to him. Baby, the folks say that Robbie Lee told him, Now hush your mouth up, boy. Now, you know that nice man ain't doing that to you. You know, he trying to help you, hush. I don't ever want to hear you say that about that nice man again. Yikes. Said not only did Billy's mama not believe him, she failed to protect him from further abuse from Bob. Basically kept on letting Bob spend uh, a long quality time with her doggone son. Now, the abuse was already enough to wreck young Billy's mind, 
but his mother's dismissal and the fact that she further let him go on with this man totally wrecked his mind. And this episode right here, we get the ball rolling for trauma to happen to him for the rest of his life. And I'm gonna tell you something else. I really think that Robbie Lee's failure to listen to her son and protect him probably made Billy feel like maybe he deserved some sort of abuse. And I say this because after this episode, rumor has it that almost several men lined up to basically abuse this child. And it was almost like Billy accepted it, almost like he was defeated. As a matter of fact, when Billy and his mother got done with the Amos and Andy tour, because Billy had done so well, he started to play piano behind some huge names in the gospel community. Uh, people like uh, Mahalia Jackson, uh, Andre Crouch, and Reverend James Cleveland. And I sure hate to say it, I really do, but gossip claims that Billy Preston may have been one of Reverend James Cleveland's alleged victim. Baby, it's alleged that Billy Preston and the singer Sylvester were over at James Cleveland's church uh, pretty much together, and it's possible both of them may have been victims of his. And yes, y'all have been asking for a James Cleveland video, but I would like to tell you that video been done for like two to three years, but it's on the members page. I wouldn't dare release it to the public. Uh, sorry, but if you guys wanna see that video, you gotta become a Remember. To get back to the story though, although these terrible things were happening to Billy behind the scenes, the flip side of the coin is that the people who were alleged to be doing this to him were also the people who were kind of helping him get further in his career. It was because he was appearing with these big known names and they were singing his praises that Billy ended up getting a very early career in film and show business. He started appearing on certain TV shows, most notably the Nat King Cole show. He sat up on his little bench and he sang and played beside Fats Domino. And then at age 11 or 12, he got the biggest role in his life thus far. And that is when he played a young W.C. Handy in a movie called St. Louis Blues. And this was absolutely groundbreaking for a child, not only because of who he was playing, W.C. Handy, uh, because of the dynamite cast that was beside him. You had Pearl Bailey, you had Nat King Cole, Eartha Kitt, Ella Fitzgerald, Ruby Dee, and many more. So Billy Preston certainly was the new kid in town and everybody had eyes on him. He continued to play music behind big gospel legends, but at the age of 15, he started to play music behind Little Richard. And I don't know if it's true or not, but gossip claims that Little Richard was basically using Billy Preston as a boy toy. In fact, in 1965, a German bodyguard who basically said that he had been one of the security bodyguards on the tour, he came out with a book and basically told the world that Little Richard was using Billy Preston for this. Now, Billy Preston absolutely denied this. He said it was a nasty rumor and there was no truth to this, but it was out there. And even though I don't know if that is true or false, I do know that his time spent with Little Richard basically rocketed his name with the stars. You know, he started playing with everybody. He was playing with Jackie Wilson at the age of 16. Also at the age of 16, he started playing behind Sam Cooke. And this is when he really started getting his bearings because he also recorded his first album on Sam Cooke's label. The album, which was called 16 Year Old Soul, didn't really go anywhere, but it still did nothing to dampen Billy's name. There was a whole host of celebrities just waiting to play with this whiz kid. And Ray Charles was at the top of the list. So around 16, 17 years old, maybe even 18 years old, Billy Preston started playing alongside Ray Charles. And Little Richard definitely gave Billy Preston the spotlight when Billy Preston played with him, but it was nothing like how Ray Charles gave Billy Preston the spotlight. Because Ray Charles would not only let Billy Preston have piano solos and play whole songs by himself, Ray Charles would invite Billy Preston to come up to the center of the stage and sing some of his songs. In fact, Ray Charles let Billy Preston take center stage on an actual TV show, The Ed Sullivan Show to be exact. And baby, when I tell you that Billy Preston came out there and did his sing, honey, he sang a song called Double O Soul. Listen, the boy blew everybody away. His voice was fantastic. And not only that, he could 
Move, baby. Uh, Billy was out there thinking he was James Brown the way his feet was kicking. It's in the pinned comment under the scent bird link. Please go watch that doggone performance and let me know when is the last time that you have seen a performance so amped up and so electrifying. Ray Charles did a lot for Billy Preston and it was time for Billy Preston to do a lot for somebody else. And that's because it was while he was still touring and singing with Ray Charles that Billy Preston ended up meeting four young white guys who had their own band. And this band was the Beatles. And allegedly the Beatles were rehearsing one night and the mood was bad. You know what I'm saying? They were all mad at each other. And allegedly George Harrison was getting ready to bust uh, John Lennon upside the head. And then George Harrison was just like, you know what? Let me take a breath. And so he ended up walking out of the rehearsal studio and just kind of walking down the street. And so he saw a sign that said that Ray Charles was playing tonight. He walks into the theater and he looks up on the stage and there he sees Billy Preston. Billy Preston is giving another one of his glorious performances and immediately George Harrison is like, who the heck is that guy? That's the next big thing. So he goes backstage and he goes to talk to Billy Preston and he asks Billy, hey, you know, can you come rehearse with the Beatles? Can you just come and talk to us? Man, we would love to work with you. And I didn't explain this well enough, but the whole reason that the Beatles were moody and trying to fight each other and all this kind of stuff is because during this particular time, which I think was late 1960s, they were kind of in a dry spell with their music. They needed something fresh. They needed something new. Billy brought that to the table. Baby said Billy started writing all kind of new music, all kind of new songs. Uh, Gossip claims he even wrote or helped write Hey Jude. And that song was a huge hit, but that was only one of them. There were several of them. He was so instrumental in the continuation of success of the Beatles on up until the 1970s that some of the Beatles wanted him to become a Beatle. Rumor has it that John Lennon and George Harrison were like the first two to be like, hey, we need to make Billy Preston the fifth Beatle. I don't see anything wrong with that. But yeah, the folks say that Paul McCartney was sitting up there frowned up and hating in the corner talking about some, y'all ain't got my vote. It's only four Beatles. And so Billy did not become the fifth Beatle, but even today you can hear people uh, acknowledge him and say, shoo, he really is the fifth Beatle. Either way it goes, Billy Preston helped the Beatles with their success, and he also started working on his own success. Now I haven't delved into all of the music that Billy Preston recorded, but by 1974, I think the boy already had at least three or four hits. But it was in 1974 that his major hit would hit radio airway. Nothing from nothing leaves nothing. Yes, Billy, but you gotta have something if you wanna be with me. Doom, 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 doom. Nothing from nothing leaves nothing. Y'all didn't know I was gonna hit it, did you? Doggone it. Yes, nothing from nothing leaves nothing. That doggone intro blasted out on radio stations and baby, blew everybody's hair back. The song was a mega hit. It stayed on the top of the Billboard charts for at least a week, sold a boatload of copies, and it really just cemented Billy Preston's legacy as a musical genius. And y'all are waiting for me to say that's when he blasted into the stratosphere and what we know him as today, but I'm not gonna say that because that's absolutely what did not happen. Because while everybody was happy and cheering and yeah, Billy, you go get him. Billy Preston on the inside was massively depressed and he was fighting hard in a battle that he was destined to lose. Let's get to the scandal of it all, baby. So I've already told you guys that Billy Preston was molested at a young age. Well, gossip claims him being molested turned him into a gay man. I know folks say that you can't turn nobody gay and all this kind of stuff, I get it. You know what I'm saying? I'm just telling y'all what the rumors say. Well anyways, this is what gossip claims. And because Billy was a gay man, he was absolutely tormented because you have these grown men that did this to him, particularly pastors, church leaders, choir directors, all these kind of men that did this to him, had him where he started feeling a certain way or started realizing some things about him and his sexuality. And then these same pastors, uh, church directors, church leaders would get up in the pulpit or the choir stand and tell Billy that the way he felt was wrong. They would stand there and they would preach against homosexuality, preach against men and men, women and women. 
so this is a 9, 10, 11 year old child that's sitting in the audience that is absolutely confused. Not only is he confused, but the men that opened this up inside of you that possibly even made you feel this way are pointing down on you telling you that if you feel this way, if anybody feels this way, it's wrong. And guess what? God hates it and you're going to hell. And so Billy, first of all, gets confused. Then he starts to get scared because you're telling him he's going to go to hell. And then he starts to feel guilty because even though you're telling him this and he's supposed to be scared of hell and God and everybody else, uh, he still cannot shake these feelings. And so this is the seed that was planted in him as a young child. And by the time that he became an adult, it had grown into a big tree. You know what I'm saying? He had stressed and had been anxious with anxiety and all these thoughts and everything over the years. Like it just basically shredded his mind to pieces and things would only get worse from here because Billy was a guilty gay and I'm not even trying to be funny saying that that's really literally what it was he was a guilty gay man he spent most of his young adulthood trying to be a macho man you know what I'm saying a lover boy who just loved women I gotta have them all and he really didn't have to have them all in fact he didn't even want them all didn't want them at all you know, but he felt he had to portray this. So this led to him trying to make relationships work with women and they usually didn't work out. However, in the late 1960s, early 1970s, he did find a woman that he finally connected with. Her name was Kathy Silva. Gossip claims Kathy Silva is the only woman that Billy ever loved. But he confided in some of his close friends that he would have to get higher than a giraffe's TT just to get it on with Kathy. And if he could not find a drug, or if he wasn't high, then he just couldn't get it on with her. And so I'm pretty sure most signs would point to the fact that this probably meant that their lovemaking was sporadic. But even through this, they still ended up being together and Billy was actually going to marry Kathy. He proposed to her. She was his fiance. But just like Billy was feeling the tension when it came down to them making love, Kathy was feeling this same uh, tension and this same hesitancy. And unfortunately, Billy ends up becoming really close friends with Sly Stone. Well, here comes Sly, who has a very healthy appetite for women all around Kathy Silva. You know, what's up, Kat? How you doing? What's up, girl? Doing all this kind of stuff. And Billy ends up coming home from a tour one day and he gets in the bedroom and Kathy's legs are up to the sky, baby. Or should I say up to the sly? Because that's definitely who was in between them. Baby Gossip says the sly was just kind of like, you know, shoot, sorry, man. You know, but it is what it is. And maybe it's because he knew Billy was a gay man. You know, I'm not sure. But either way it goes, sly was wrong because Kathy Silva was Billy's fiance. And to be honest with you, the people say that this affair devastated Billy Preston. He had put a lot into this relationship with Kathy. You know what I'm saying? He basically forced himself to be attracted to her and also like they did have a connection. So it devastated him and it also made him even more hard on himself because he started to feel like here I am trying to be a straight guy and I failed. Then he had to start all over again. You know what I'm saying? Now he got to put the mask back on and start from square one, hoping that he would get another woman because he was dead set on keeping up this disguise. And it's alleged that the very small circle of people who knew that Billy was gay would kind of just tell him, you know, why don't you just live your life as a gay man? You know what I'm saying? Quit trying to be something that you're not. And Billy would basically go off. Man, don't you know that that's a sin? I can't live like that. You know, my family gonna look at me wrong. You know, I can't displease God. What you want me to go to hell? And so he kept his mask on. And of course, this kept that ongoing battle inside of him. But trying to keep his true identity unknown led Billy down an even darker road. He started to do almost anything to fulfill his sexual desire. Rumor has it he started cruising close to the soul train lot looking for dancers who may have been gay, trying to pick these guys up. There was also a claim that he ended up hiring a young musician to work for him. And when the young musician showed up for work the first day, Billy straight up asked him directly, hey man, what you gonna do? You gonna give me some throaty body? Hey, please. Please give me some throaty body. You gonna give me some? And it's quite obvious that this young musician was a homosexual because Billy wouldn't just be comfortable just straight out asking that. But it was the way he asked. You ain't tried to get to know this man. You ain't tried to do nothing. You just coming straight out, you know, asking for him to do a sexual favor for you. Almost like Billy was just like, you know, like, I need to get my rocks off. You know, mm, 
Mm. And allegedly, he did this to several men. Like I said, some soul train dancers, some young musicians, heck, probably even some strangers. Sometimes these men would take Billy up on his offer, and then other times these men would be like, hey, you too aggressive, and they would reject the offer. When Billy would get rejected, he would go through even more stress and turmoil because he would be terrified that these people who rejected him might tell his secret. And then on the flip side, if these men agreed to do this with Billy, he would go through a whole emotional breakdown after it was over, feeling like, you know, golly, I sinned again. You know, man, I can't get rid of this feeling. What's wrong with me? And so this paralyzing fear, scared that somebody's going to tell on him, and also this other guilt after he would do what he did, all of this became a lot, and so Billy started to get away from his own mind. Basically, he started to do drugs. And over time, this just got worse and worse. So his drug habit went from like marijuana all the way to cocaine, and very soon, it turned into crack. And so now, at rehearsals, Billy is acting weird, if he shows up at rehearsal at all. Sometimes he's very hyped up and very amped up, and then sometimes he's falling asleep during the session. So his career started to suffer a lot, and at the end of the 1970s, and into the 1980s, uh, it really started to hit the skids. It was going to the slum. Well, let me say this. The official story is that because of the drugs, his career started going to the slums. There is a rumor out here that says something totally different. Allegedly, the reason Billy Preston's career suddenly kind of disappeared in the 1980s is because people found out that he had molested Michael Jackson. Ow! Listen, I put my hand up because I don't know, but that's definitely the word on the streets. Allegedly, Billy had worked with a very young Michael Jackson sometime in the mid-60s, and allegedly, this is when he did Touchy Feely. Gossip claims that when Michael was a teenager or a very young adult, he ended up confiding in a friend or family member that this is what Billy did to him. Now, I believe that rumor because to me if that was the real reason that Billy's career stopped like that would have been everywhere so I really don't believe that rumor there is another rumor out here as well that I also caution you to take with a grain of salt but rumor has it that in the 1980s Billy Preston wasn't too down and out about his career because he had a boyfriend to keep him happy child and the folks say the boyfriend was Bobby DeBar now before y'all start screaming and hollering and possibly throwing stuff at your phone and TV. This, like I said, is a grain of salt rumor. It ended up on a gossip blog. Y'all know how I feel about those rumors because people could just make stuff up. But yes, for some reason, people in the gossip blogs feel like it's uh, a possibility that Billy Preston and Bobby DeBarge uh, messed around with each other. But let's get back to some of the real reasons that Billy Preston's life was taking a detour. One of the reasons was because Billy Preston really didn't have as much money as he should have had. Um, a lot of that times when he was working with the Beatles and Ray Charles and some of the other people, but especially the Beatles, gossip claims that Billy Preston really didn't get paid for his work like he should have. While he should have been getting a huge huge percentage for the work that he put in, the things he did. And so now you have Billy whose career is not going well. He also already doesn't have a lot of money and he has a drug addiction. So Billy does what he feels like he needs to do for money. And rumor has it that either in the year 1991 or 1996, Billy Preston's house goes up in flames. Billy running around talking about some fire, 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 somebody help me, help me. But when the fire department and the police uh, department get there, they done found out that he didn't set the house on fire, trying to do home insurance for all. Maybe the folks helped him all right, helped him on into some handcuffs and charged his behind. I don't think he spent much time, if any time, in jail for that, but it didn't matter because Billy Preston was on a crash course. In fact, the thing that happened in 1991 is probably what started or what really propelled those Michael Jackson rumors because in 1991, Billy Preston was cruising around all kind of California neighborhoods looking for aliens and not the gray body black eye aliens. I'm talking about the other aliens. Aliens, the illegal alien. Child said Billy was cruising one night and found a 16 year old Mexican boy and told the boy, hey, hey, I need you to come back at my house. I got some work for you. I got a hole I need for you to plug. I need you to stuff a hole at my house. So the Mexican boy who was looking for a job as a laborer jumped in the truck with Billy and they go back to Billy's house. When they get there, Billy tells the boy, hey, you know, before you start working, let's just chill. Let's just relax. You know, you smoke, you smoke. Mexican boy starts smoking. He's sitting on the couch chilling. 
one. Billy keep checking over, looking at him, trying to see if the boy is relaxed. And Gossip actually says that on top of marijuana, Billy possibly also offered this young boy some crack. I'm not sure if the child indulged or not, but I do know that while the child is just sitting there chilling, Billy ends up turning on a prano. And the boy is kind of looking around, you know what I'm saying? He's kind of stunned, but he's sitting there watching. And soon, Billy starts to rub up on the doggone boy. So the boy is like, uh, you know, I'm sorry. I thought you had some work for me to do. You know, where's the hole you want me to plug? Baby, that's when he found out that the only hole that Billy wanted him to plug was the one between his floppy cheeks whether it was the upper cheeks or the lower cheeks. And Ashley, you know you ought to be shamed. But whether I'm shamed or not, baby, the Mexican boy didn't know what was going on, so he took off running straight to the cop. Police came and arrested Billy, and they charged him with sexual battery. They uh, charged him with showing pronos to a child. Well, most of the serious charges were dropped, and Billy ended up posting a $10,000 bail, and I actually don't even know if he spent any jail time for that. But he probably should have. Because in 1992, a 30 ish year old uh illegal immigrant went to billy's house for labor and baby when he got into billy's house billy tried to manhandle this man to make him give him some pp and when he wasn't strong enough to manhandle the guy baby billy pulled out a knife on that dude talking about you better give up that wood right now sucker I mean, give me some of that good wood right now. Child, that man probably ran by Billy, slapped him in the back of the head, and ran on out the house. You know, I really don't know how he got out the house, but he did end up getting out of the house, and he also ran straight to the police. This time, Billy was charged again with sexual battery. He was charged again with uh, possession of cocaine, and I think he had one more big charge. In the end, though, out of all of these charges, the only thing to stick this time was the possession of cocaine, and uh, Billy spent some time in a rehab center. All of these evil acts surprised the heck out of a lot of people who knew Billy Preston, but the ones who really, really knew him, who were close to him, kind of knew that he was acting out because of the way he felt about being a gay man. This is not to excuse Billy from his uh, predation, you know what I'm saying, excuse the fact that he was a predator, but it's really sad that he allowed himself to become one to be that tortured and that shame to admit that you are a homosexual that you have to resort to trying to take it from somebody after his stint in rehab though Billy Preston did clean up a little bit and one of the first things he did was return to his music in 2002 he even performed at a tribute concert for George Harrison and he made the crowd very emotional when he played his song my sweet lord after he got this standing ovation and all of this love he finally finally told friends that he was done with the bad life. You know what I'm saying? He definitely wasn't going to assault anybody anymore, but he said he was also done with drugs. He wanted to start over. And he probably did want to, but he did not. He continued to use drugs, and in that same year of 2002, he suffered kidney failure. He had to have a kidney transplant. Plan. And the doctors, the family, the friends, and anybody else he was associating with told him after he received this new kidney, Billy, you have to stop the drugs. You will die. You know what I'm saying? You got you a new kidney, but your body is clearly shutting down. You have to stop the drugs. I'm, I'm going to stop y'all show right. You right. I'm going to stop. And it looked like to everybody that he had stopped, honestly started to look a little bit better. You know, he got uber serious about his career. He even ended up getting a new manager, which was Sam Moore of Sam and Dave. Uh, and he grew very close to Sam Moore's wife, Joyce Moore. And rumor has it that Joyce was alleged to be a great influence on Billy. Uh, Gossip claims that she is even the one that finally got him to come to terms with the fact that he was a gay man. Not only come to terms with it, but admit it. Say it out of his mouth. The story says that she talked him into seeing a therapist. She set things up, you know, she made his appointment, and Billy started to see this therapist. And then one day he ended up calling Joyce, and when she picked up the phone, Billy commenced to cursing her behind out. Baby said Billy was on the phone just, you stupid B. You know, I hate you. Oh my God, you stupid B. I can't believe this. And so Joyce is like, Billy, what is wrong with you? What's going on? I did it. I told a therapist. I told him about my feelings. I admitted to somebody that I'm gay. I told somebody. And Joyce basically allegedly had to calm him down like, you know, Billy, and that's good. You know, don't you feel better? Don't you feel better? You see, the sky didn't fall down. You know what I'm saying? It's okay. And after this episode, this is when things get 
funny style because allegedly a couple of months after this phone call and him going back and forth to the therapist, Billy made up his mind to cut his family out of his will. Not only did he make up his mind to do it, he actually did it. In the year 2004, um, gossip claims Billy Preston signed papers to cut his entire family out of his will. And the reason I say that things got funny style is because this allegedly happened right after he was able to admit that he was a gay man, some people seem to believe that it was possibly Billy's family that was making him feel so guilty about being gay. You know, they were said to be staunch Christians, you know, very religious. And so it's very possible that for him, in order to live his new free life, he felt like he didn't need to have anything else to do with them. And I wanna make clear that speculation. Nobody that I know knows for sure. That's just kind of what they speculated. They speculated it was his family that was making him feel guilty. But what they do know for sure and that I know for sure is that Billy definitely had sisters who were incredibly upset. And I don't even know if they were necessarily upset about being cut out of the wheel. Uh, Gossip claims they were more upset because they felt like it was Joyce Moore's doing. They felt like Joyce Moore had taken their brother kind of away from them, moved him to a whole different town, and kind of just talked him into cutting his family off. You know, they felt like he was goaded to do it. Regardless of what anybody felt like though, Billy Preston allegedly finally felt like he was free. And he was preparing to make a comeback. He was just looking for somebody to give him a chance. And Gossip claims that that chance came one day in November of 2005. It is alleged that a day in November 2005, uh, Billy Preston has signed a new contract to record music. He was happy about it. He was ecstatic about it and he wanted to celebrate. And the man celebrated with drugs. And the folks say that he loaded up on him, baby. He did so much that night that he developed pericarditis. And so that very next day, Billy Preston was in a coma with respiratory failure. And as soon as his comatose head hit the comatose bed, baby, I mean drama started. Real drama family drama. His sisters and Joyce Moore started to go at each other. The sisters were making claims that Joyce Moore was after their brother's money. You know, allegedly they even possibly said that Joyce Moore could have done something to their brother to put him in a coma. They said that Joyce Moore had basically let their brother get sick and then abandoned him in the hospital. You know, she's not taking care of him. They went further to say that Joyce Moore was blocking them from coming to the hospital to visit their brother. Pretty much what it came down to was his his manager Joyce Moore and his family, particularly his two sisters, fighting over his money, his estate, anything he had left. And people do this, you know what I'm saying? I hate to say it, but it's kind of common. But God dog it, y'all, people do this after the folks have died. You know what I'm saying? Y'all fighting over this man's stuff like this man is dead. He is alive. He's just in a coma. Scandalous. In fact, Billy got into a coma November 2005. He would not die until June 6th, 2006, when he was 59 years old. And after his death, I don't even think anybody grieved or really had time to grieve and mourn because they were too busy fighting. These two factions fought over Billy Preston's money money, valuables, and estate for years, baby. When I say years, uh, it actually finally ended in the year 2016, and it ended in the favor of Joyce Moore. The judge declared that Billy Preston's trust and his will should stand and that the family would not get anything. And then with all of this scandal that surrounded his life, uh, Billy Preston never really got the due praise he should have received for all of his contributions to the music industry. I know I mostly talked about the Beatles, but Billy Preston did a lot of stuff. Stuff. his hand was in a lot of stuff. He helped a lot of people and a lot of songs would not have been hits if it was not for him. But this man has no Hall of Fame type stuff. You know what I'm saying? He has no stars on nobody's sidewalk or anything. So it's just a sad tale. But anyways, we are at the end of the old Hollywood scandalous tale of the life of Mr. Billy Preston. Um, if you guys enjoyed the video, please like the video. If you guys are new here, please subscribe. If you guys have been sitting on the fence, please go ahead and subscribe. I love you guys so much. Um, I'll see you soon with another video. Bye.